Mm -hmm. I just opened the window. It, it, it doesn't make too much noise, no? No. No, here. no, no, okay. no. I, I can't hear any, anything. It so. took me a while to understand whether you mean a uh, window as a... <laughs> <laughs> Computer window. Like the actual window. <laughs> there's no, so there's no noise. Also, oh, I'll just interrupt. Uh, Paula yeah, suggested yeah. that we all have like a shared document where we can share links to things that we want to share with each other music mm -hmm. and whatever. So I created a Google Drive thing. And awesome. Yeah, uh, I just posted in comments and you can just put all the links there. So they will be available for everyone. I'm a little bit of a, an all over the place guy in the informal stuff. So yeah, bear with me. So my mind will skip to stuff and then I'll just talk about it. So I'm, I'm a designer and, and an illustrator and I always, enjoyed uh, listening to music and then a few years back like five years ago i came across this really nice uh, company called teenage engineering and they make these design things mm -hmm. and one of them or one of those design things i should actually go get them to to, to show you guys but it's basically music making machines like uh, synthesizers Mm -hmm. And yeah. these are all analog, like you can see on the back. It's like a, a this one has a case, but it's it's basically a breadboard, like a, a oh, board okay. that has some, you can even solder stuff into this tiny device called a pocket operator. And this is basically where I do most of my uh, music endeavors. This is one of the toys I use. <laughs> How many? Uh, I have more than I should have. <laughs> Let's put it this way. No, I have a lot of them. This uh, this one is in particular. This is like like a bunch of buttons, right? The buttons have specific uh, actions, but you can uh, this one in particular can like send audio in, and then record the audio, and then you have basically a, a pad to work like like an MPC style thing. Mm -hmm. In this in this size, like it's super small. Like look at this this thing, and it it's all retro. Like the, yeah. that reminds you of the of the old retro style the gaming that people yeah, used to have. Yeah, yeah, I was actually, gonna comment on that. <laughs> it's <laughs> actually based on the same technology. It's just a, a screen, and it has like the predefined uh, uh, animations, and then it mm -hmm. plays music in this form. Like electronic music, you can make all behave and work in the same way like you have a matrix of steps like usually 16 steps and then you can put like on the first uh, step you put like a kick and then on the fifth and then it repeats so one fifth seventh and thirteenth and then each time and i can actually show you what that means but i'll be muted so i'll show you in a bit but these these light up when you're editing and then you can see that uh, it will like scream through this and then loop and then go back. So like it, it, the, the light will just follow this path and whenever it hits one of these lit okay. buttons, it will play the sound. So that's more or less how, how it works. I'll show another one that's based on the, <laughs> this. This one looks like uh, the same, it's the same concept, but it's like six of these smaller ones stuck into this kind of remote control looking thing. Can you guys hear the drum and bass yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of thing happening mm -hmm. here? Can you guys see the, uh, yeah, yeah. the, the lights go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just stop and then I'll create like a blank. So this is basically just you can take this to the streets and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like people listen to music on their phones. You just bring this and you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so cool. you, you have like a um, line yeah. in your phones yeah. and you can stick this into here and then stick it in here as well f to, for it to output yeah so you can basically get to someone else someone else's house and then plug this into their speakers and then make music on the spot sometimes it doesn't work when you want it to oh, okay so can you guys hear it like i'm on a kick yeah i can select like multiple kicks and so then what you do is you put the kick where you want it to be so you can just hit play, right? And it's like nothing is lit, so it's not showing anything. So you just go to the first step and you hit. Now it, whenever it passes through it, 
And I'll just lower the BPM because otherwise it will be super fast. It's still super fast, but you get the point. <laughs> so no, it's so basically fun. making a beat like it's super fast when it's, it's so fast. One cool thing about this guy is that you can connect it to a phone and then you can actually see what's happening on the, without a, because it doesn't have a screen. So you either memorize all of the, uh, like uh, button combinations, or you can actually connect it to a, to, a, to a phone world, which I will do just for the sake of showing you also that. So this is what the interface looks like, which is quite cool as well. Like it says kick on the top and then if I, click the buttons it will so let's see bpm it will show you the, the bpm i see so. my face that's all i see <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> so if i release yeah. like can you guys see the so it should say 175 yeah and it yeah I'll change that to 140 okay no let me okay now it's on 40 all right and then it will sound a little bit more like a so now it's on 140, right? Mm -hmm. And if I hit play, I should be able to get a more techno vibe thing. It's just, I feel like I'm in a club again. Yep, yep. <laughs> so basically I have like tons of, uh, so in, 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 then all these buttons do different things. So right now I'm in, um, I'm in a, uh, um, sequence mode, right? Mm -hmm. But then I can click them with this button on top, uh, hold, hold, and then I access pattern banks and stuff like that. So that's, there's like a hidden, uh, your hidden like uh, functions around this, these things. But okay. in this, this is actually a keyboard, which is also quite nice. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, this is actually a Swiss army knife. This, is, a, this is very yeah. much a, a Swiss army knife. <laughs> Look at this. Oh and then you can record this on the spot. So this, this is, that's basically how, how this works. Basically, my last few, few years have been trying to learn these, these machines. And the past year with COVID, I actually delved into something even uh, more <laughs> more crazy. So these are mini uh, modular synthesizers, yeah. which you can like plug and unplug with cables. So they're like this, this thing is like cables all, all over. So then in order to make music, you have, actually have to make the connections yourself. So you see like these crazy dudes with mountains of uh, cables and then they're like, I have a I have a friend who has lots of those things in the house, and I remember I went once, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, teach me. Obviously, I didn't understand anything, so I was just <laughs> plugging cables into things, and I I was like, "I'm afraid to blow it up accidentally by not, you know, oh, I don't understand like what that does." But it was fun. So <laughs> but it's I was super like, oh. fun. <laughs> it's it's very daunting at the at, at the beginning. Like I yeah. spent. I spent like, I don't know, a few months just, I, I started with one of those, just, just got one and they're very, very expensive. So if you're gonna go down one of these routes of modular, this is called modular synthesizers or synthesis. You, you can, you can uh, basically <clears throat> spend a lot of money. So I don't really recommend it <laughs> unless you, you wanna just let go of, uh, of of money that, that. <laughs> so <clears throat> basically these these are a little bit more less expensive and they do kind of the same thing but they're digital right and you only have like these knobs to turn how much see. is the is that one the swiss army knife thing like how much do you pay yeah, for yeah, that exactly i wanted to ask that yeah. also yeah because so i would get these, that for sure <laughs> these go go around like a hundred euros oh. and this is this is yeah. when it's 500 500 <laughs> So, okay. Yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> That's where my expensive. interest uh, peaked. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. So, so yeah, that's that's what I was saying. Quite the uh, the expensive hobby to have. This Swiss Army knife one, which uh, is called OPZ or OPZ, by the way. This this guy, this guy is incredible because it has a lot more functionalities. Mm -hmm. so you you can one create music in it, right? You can sample music into it as well. 
the same as this small one. And you can use it as a VJ kind of thing. So you can create music nice. and you can control video with, with this thing. And also you can go into Unity 3D. Do, do you guys know Unity? It's basically software that you can create games in. I highly recommend that you go check it out because you can basically create all sorts of, of things in it. You can create games like in 2D, in 3D, and you can create uh, like interactive or, or things that you can interact with, not only games in it. I remember this came to existence when I was in university. Um, yeah, you can guys already tell that I'm a little bit older now. I already left university like 10 or 12 years ago, which sucks. Are you guys still in university or, or not at all? No. Also left it. No. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> the world of, we're, uh... we're still in high school, actually. No. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Okay. I feel like it. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the corporate side of working and how stuff happens when you have like a day job because mm. it's just not as fun as when I was in university. At least for me, I work as a user interface designer and user experience. So I do a little oh, that's bit. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah. What's a designer yeah. do? <laughs> what does a designer do? Well, right now, I basically half of my day is meetings with my team <laughs> because uh, okay. we have we have to work <laughs> remotely. But my my uh, so what I do I. I work for a company that has a software that helps people uh, perform like hazardous activities in in the gas and oil industry and then other like safety related industries like pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. So imagine you're this guy that needs to go measure a pump in this big, big factory. And in order for them to do that safely, they have to follow a lot of procedures to do it and these procedures used to be paper based and my 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 company has this software that allows people to do this in a digital way so they basically access their phone or go to their computers and then do this process in the computers which allows them to have audits on this prevent uh, incidents and then log uh, activities <coughs> with data Right. So my job is related to how the interface looks and how people use it and mostly get, gathering data to understand if people use it correctly, if they know that the, the software is good for them to use, if, if uh, the colors are correct and all of those visual aspects. I, I'm more on the visual aspect of it, which is why <coughs> UI design stands for, user interface. And uh, my team is composed of uh, user experience designers, which may mostly do research to understand like the, the user's needs and the client's needs. And if our software actually responds to, to what people, uh, the actions that they want to, to, to do. Right. However, <laughs> I'm not very, I'm, I'm a computer person. I've been using my comp like, like computer since I was a kid, but. I like to do stuff like this and uh, just draw on paper all day. And uh, I've been drawing since I was a kid and I'm like creative. And it was really weird to, to come to, to the working environment and see people are not creative at all. Like they don't even understand creative people that much in, in the setting that I was in. Um, as a little bit of context as well, like I, I moved into the Netherlands in 2018 and I lived in Portugal since before that. <laughs> and I'll just show briefly some weird sketches that I've been doing. Some are a little bit not safe for work right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, um, I, what I like to do is like, I, I take these sketchbooks with me all the time. And most of the times I go to the pub with some friends and I draw there because I, I, I like to draw alone, but I'm most comfortable drawing when I have people around. So I would, back in Portugal, I would, I would always go to cafes and have coffee with people, just doodle on whatever was in front of me. I've drawn since I was a kid and it was really nice. And I was used to 
like gave all my drawings away and stuff like that. And then at some point I realized that if I wanted to live off drawing all day, I would have to make this a business. And that's when I uh, decided that I didn't want to do that <laughs> because it kills, or at least to me, it killed all the fun. And I've tried to do that as well. Like I've tried to do some graphic work for people and then managing clients and stuff like that. But I, I really suck at um, everything else, but the actual act of drawing. <laughs> also the type of drawing that I enjoy doing is not like, it's a very crude, a bit raw, something that's completely unfinished and I like to just do it in the moment. I'm kind of a person that will just draw in front of you at any time having a coffee or something like that. So <clears throat> I would have to train myself to actually deliver finished work, which I, I, st I still am thinking of doing that. <laughs> Along the way, I basically decided, oh, let's try this music thing and, and, and see where this goes as well. And basically explore and have fun. That's, that's my motto, like, let's see. I saw you posted um, that you had like sort of a little workshop with people uh, drawing together. Yes. Was that so? That, that that's that's where it brought me to this um, kind of exercise that I've been doing in, in Instagram, mm -hmm. where I try to jam and draw at the same time, which which came as a like I was I don't know sitting in a sofa or about to fall asleep, and I get that. Haha uh -huh, moments. Oh, well, what if I did this thing? What would it, what it did, would, would look like? And I did it for 15 days, exactly 15 days. And I'll get to the question you actually asked. I'm digressing <laughs> a lot. But the last video that I posted was basically a few friends of mine. They came to, they came to our house, still previous to this curfew thing that every country is imposing on everyone now. So we just had people in had a bunch of wine, Portuguese people that were here. And then we just uh, had a night of just talking and then eventually we played Pictionary. And that's that's what, yeah, that's the exercise that we were doing. I did a very dangerous thing. Do you guys see that chandelier on top? Mm -hmm. So here. So basically I, I, um, I put my iPad like um, on a string. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> so you guys see it. That's exactly what it was. And um, this this iPad, <laughs> basically, I, I put oh, 700 man. euros on floating from, from the, for like an hour or two, and it's fine. Jesus. So you guys, yeah, don't do not do that. But I, 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 did, I did 15 times in a row. I would just like gently put the iPad without any support. So if I would just bump it against it, they would fall. <laughs> And that's how I recorded all those videos that are on, on, on Instagram. So oh sometimes <laughs> just just hack it out. Don't don't think about it too much. I also have some yeah, digital stuff, you guys can see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. It could be like a pattern for uh, printed paper, you know? Yep. For like wrapping a, paper. For wrapping paper, <laughs> yes. I should, I should definitely get in touch with the uh, brands and stuff like that but uh, i feel like i'm the, the most productive when i'm bored or when i don't have anything to do and i'm just like okay let's try this out i don't know if you if it happens to you yeah i was gonna say that's the same for me um it, like i always reach this point of boredom where i cannot bear it anymore so then ideas start bubbling in my head and I have to do something. Go oh yeah, no, even if it's like a really shitty idea and you start doing it and at least you get out of the boredom and then maybe it leads to something better and maybe better. Yeah, for sure. You know, so after a while. Really good. This quarantine for me was really good uh, in, in that sense because it just, I have so much time on my hands and honestly I don't anymore because I, I, I have a calendar now and it's like every day I have eight hours at least of things that I want to do and I'm like oh, okay oh I'm so busy and I'm looking for a job now and I cannot and I'm thinking shit <laughs> I don't have time to work <laughs> yeah, right. I find that I'm very very much so sometimes I actually do this thing where I don't do anything for a long time and I call this the cyan effect 
Super Saiyan from Dragon Ball Z. When they die, they become even stronger. <laughs> and I think about it in the way that well, if I stop doing something for a long time and then I, I actually do it after a while, I am actually strong at doing it. I also learned to let go of the expectation and that perfectionism that will not allow you to make mistakes or, or, or try things. So that's why most of my work is not like super finished or super clean. That's kind of on purpose at some point because then it allows you to, yeah, I can display anything that I like. With experimentation, like it's really, it was really hard for me to reach that point where I wouldn't have expectations for the work that I do or, you know, this perfectionism and how to let go of that. It was, I think the reason I learned to do it is just because I wanted to try so many things and I couldn't possibly be perfect at all of them, you know? So I just abandoned that notion, I think. And I was like, okay, let's just do it and see what happens. Yeah, I, and I found out a lot of things that I hate, actually. And I'm like, I don't want to do this ever again. But, you know, because I didn't invest a lot of time or energy into that, I'm like, that's fine. I tried it at least. Yeah, but that's very yeah. important, I think. And I, you kind of, for me, it was a really big learning experience, how to let go of that expectation. Yeah, I don't know how you guys deal with that. I think I'm still dealing with that a lot, like a lot of the time. With the project that I'm doing now, that would, I think, well, big knows about it, but I can explain it later. Um, like, my biggest problem is always like, okay, I, I, I want to finish everything right, and then I'm too tired to do anything because I have, in my head, I have to do it so perfectly. And then it just like this vicious cycle of like, should I do it perfectly or should I just do it uh, and see what happens? But I think it, it for me, it comes from the background of, I, I studied um, design as well. Um, and all of the projects in design school have to be like so perfect, you know, you can't just uh, give something like a presentation. No, it has to be the presentation with the perfect pictures, with the perfect font, with everything. So now I have like this, <laughs> little uh, de demon in my shoulder saying like why bother doing it if it is not going to be good yep. but I think that uh, talking with other people and like uh, when I was talking a uh, lot with Vic and stuff it also helps to be like okay just try it out just do mm -hmm. it and if it doesn't work then scrap it and do something else does everyone like study studied or still studies design? I mean, where where do you guys study? Because I, I used to study or I took my degree in Aveiro University, and then I know that like there's a lot of different schools and they all have their ways of uh, teaching design. So I'm actually curious to learn like where where do you guys are getting that? Um, I studied a uh, first product design. Um, but I didn't love it very much. It's interesting, but I didn't want to work as that. So then I did graphic design and uh, then I, and I studied in Barcelona in like a really good school. It was really cool. Um, but then I was like, okay, the graphic design market is oversaturated. So I'm going to do UX yeah. UI. <laughs> so I went to Lisboa yeah. to, to study that. That's how I met Vic actually, because I moved there to yeah. study masters. <laughs> And I, I studied in London, and my course was called Contemporary Media Practice. So when people ask me what that was, I say, I have no idea. <laughs> like, really? I really, you tell me. I really, I really don't know. I, I cannot describe it in, in one sentence. It was just, let's try things. And, you know, I chose this course, actually, because it sounded very experimental. And I was like, I'm not going to be asked, you know, to you know, oh, you have to specialize in something or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's great because I can try a lot of things out. But at the same time, the expectation was that you have to be amazing at, you know, your project has to be like all, you know, super well done. And it was really annoying because we, we didn't have this um, encouragement, I think, to like actually be experimental, you know, it was just this kind of, uh, yeah, we try things, but... If you choose to try it, you have to, you know, produce the best thing you can. And I think whatever I was producing, I always felt like it was not good enough. So I, I kind of relate to what Paula was saying as well. But at the same time, I, I was like, I, I just want to do it. So I don't care. And my grades were shit because of that. <laughs> but I was like, I had fun. So, you know. 
So yeah, at least you tried a bunch of stuff now. Exactly. Right. Although I, I felt like I have a degree at the end, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a degree in who knows what. <laughs> the degree is not everything. That's that's one of the first things that they they tell they told me in design and throughout the course of the. The, the design course I actually learned more about thinking about stuff and uh, they were very very strict on why you're doing certain things and the meaning and the reason behind it even if the uh, the uh, actual output was not as expected or, or good they would also tell us that I'm not I don't want you to design a chair or think of a different chair with new colors and stuff. No, I want you to think of a, a way to sit people. I was also I interested in Yawa's experience because she didn't mention, but I don't know your background Yeah, either. because I just didn't want to interrupt. Um, yeah, I was studying graphic design in Lithuania, but I, uh, well, I started as a, photo like studying photography. And then I switched my majors to graphic design and I studied for, for like two years and I dropped out. <laughs> because I really wanted to travel. Uh, yeah, and I did the same thing like Victoria did. I was just trying to do anything. So they wouldn't like say anything about my work in like exams. And it was like so bad. Like I'm so embarrassed about the stuff that I showed to like to people and everyone. But I was just like, I just, I just hate it so much. Like I just hate it. And It's funny because I work as a graphic designer, but I don't even like it. I just need money. <laughs> yep. So that's my experience of studying. I dropped And out of university. Do you have an idea of a job that you would want to do? Like if, if that wasn't graphic design? Yeah, well, um, the thing is that uh, for the past three years, I was working as a graphic designer and now... Yeah, I'm mostly working as an illustrator, really. That's it. So that's my dream job. And I mm -hmm. already going there as a freelancer. So I'm really, really happy about it that I will eventually for, forget graphic design. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking about, yeah, go on. No, no, no. I was just saying that's really good that you can work as something that you like so much is cool. Yeah, now I was thinking yeah. maybe it's a good yeah. uh, opportunity for you to show some of your work. Uh, you said you have a presentation. I have a presentation prepared, <laughs> but it's a funny one. Go, go. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, can I show my screen? Yeah, yeah I can. Can, you should be able to share it. Oh, yeah. Yes? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yep, I can see it. Oh, hell yeah, boy. Hell so yeah. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so this is me. Hello, I'm Yeva, illustrator, <laughs> graphic designer, not that much, and traveler. So this is things that inspires me as an illustrator. As you can see, Love Island, UK version, traveling, <laughs> Vietnam, 50 Cent, and other rap music. I also really love football, and this is a picture of my bike that got stolen, but, you know... I was gonna ask what the what does the bike represent in this collage? <laughs> just just mix of things that I really really like and just stuff that inspires me as an artist. Uh, Who's the guy with the with the necktie? With the suit? Oh, yeah. Nathan for you, it's really yeah, cool. Yeah. Nathan for That you, guy is yeah. just share, insane. Yeah. share insane the <laughs> share the link of the show to the yeah. Google yeah. Drive. Follow you will love it. It's like <laughs> the king of uh, the king of sarc it's not sarcasm it's not is it irony it I don't is know sarcasm it's, it's irony it's, sarcasm. Yeah. it's it's incredible i've watched a few of his uh it's like insane i, I really enjoyed it it's amazing. Yeah, i so have i have a lot whole... of trouble mm -hmm. go go sorry yeah, yeah so this is all the things that inspires me as a person as an illustrator of food sexy football players <laughs> some cambodian <laughs> art rap music and love island Rep me music. as a graphic designer, not that much fun. This is me at my <laughs> job. <I> just, <laughs> I, this is my last job when I was living in Cambodia. This is seriously my days. I, I would come to work with my football shorts and t-shirt and I would do absolutely nothing. 
but <laughs> they were paying me money. So I was like, okay, why not? <laughs> so were you paid for and coming it, into the office only and that's it? <laughs> yeah, well, in, uh, in Asia, they have a weird thing where you get paid for a job if you're white. So for example, I got my first job without having any, any experience whatsoever, but they really needed a white girl in a company to represent that they're international. I don't know that they have money, stuff like that. So for example, in my first company, it was, it, it was a publishing company. So my job was to do a magazine, but for example, I would go to business meetings that had nothing to do with my job, but they really needed me just to be there and just like sit and just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. and I would just listen about like stuff. I don't know what I was listening about. So they, yeah, they would speak so English, like, right? I'm sorry? They, they would speak English. They, yeah. they, it was an international company. Okay. Yeah, it was an international company. I like that the, the bathroom looks super fancy and you look like you're just chilling at home. <laughs> yeah, that was actually the nicer, like a place in the city I was living in. I was living in the capital, Phnom Penh. Uh, but it's super still very third world country. And I was uh, working in this uh, like office complex that was built by uh, Westerners. So they, they were just like, they just wanted to create a little space for Westerners. I know that sounds very horrible, but it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> Me as a traveler. <laughs> As you can Yoda. see, I really love that Baby Yoda DJ. Oh my God, <laughs> that t-shirt. <laughs> I saw that in, in Bangkok. And this is me in, in Vietnam. This is me just living my life. And some pictures from Sri Lanka and Malaysia. And What's this the, is, with the crates? Is it a shelf of bottles? Yeah, this uh, this picture is just some random restaurant in Sri Lanka, really. I don't even remember because it was <laughs> so, so long ago. <laughs> okay, and this is my proud wall. Some <laughs> publications, some uh, websites that published my work, my exhibition. And today, one of the best sports women in the world, Venus Williams, liked my Instagram post. So I was very really? happy with myself. Yes, I know. I cannot believe it. Oh my God. Myself. Congratulations. Good for it. Thank you. <laughs> I actually don't know yeah. who Venus Williams is. Sorry. It's the sister of, the, um, of Serena, Serena Williams. Williams. Oh, the tennis player. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Fucking awesome. So, so this is my proud wall. So when you and have your private my... jet, please fly us out somewhere. Maybe. <laughs> You're even lucky to talk with me now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just some uh, examples of my work, which is still for me, it's really hard to describe in any way, really. Uh, I use a lot of colors, a lot of splashes of colors and blobs. Um, I have a background in classical graphics, which was really, really my thing when I was growing up. Uh, so I really tried to incorporate that. I really love small stuff like, ch -ch -ch -ch, but because of, I don't know, because of how everything is going fast, I'm just losing that a little bit. So I'm, I'm a bit sad about that uh, because you always have to produce something and you have to go and go and go and go. And then you just have no time for in a sense for real things, which is really sad, but I try to yeah do that as much as I can. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I this is my love work. the the ramen one that is like in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's so cool with the little square yes. background. It's super nice. This yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. That's. That's all from me, guys. Thank you. And this is Leo <laughs> holding my work. <laughs> I love this that one picture. is Photoshop, but maybe next year. We, can, in the we can tell. No, we can tell. It's Photoshop. Yeah. yeah. It's an actual so, yes. Leo. Actually over the actual picture. So that's it. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for presenting it. Yeah. It's yeah. Really cool. 
Okay, now I, I don't know how to stop sharing, so please don't look at my porn websites. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the many tabs that compose your browser. I also have them. I also have them. <laughs> Paula, do you want to show some of your creative stuff? Um, yeah, sure. I also made a presentation, I think. Ooh, oh, works. hell yeah. Yeah, it's not as funny as just uh, to put together some pictures <laughs> that I it. took. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'm Paula, and, <laughs> and lately I have been very excited about making a project um, like uh, with jewelry and with colors and with um, I don't know, just things that make me happy because I've always, um, well, I'm, I'm, I have the background in design, like I told you, and lately I'm always working with the computer because I'm doing websites and this and that, and I was like totally bored of being in the computer all day. Um, so I was like, okay, what can I do? And during the quarantine, um, my sister got some materials and we were like experimenting with it. And I remember when the quarantine finished, I, I started wearing the stuff and everybody was like, oh, this is cool, I like it. Where did you get it from? And I was like, oh, I made it. No, oh, that's a nice <laughs> feeling. You're like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so um, yeah, I was telling uh, Vic and I was telling other friends like, oh, this is really fun. Like I, I enjoy making this and I don't have a job right now. I'm looking, so I was, so in the end I was like, Let's do something with this. So I've been very lucky because uh, one friend gifted me like a bunch of materials lately. So I have a lot of stuff to use. And then I have another friend who is a model. So you're about to see some pictures that look really cool because she's a really good model and she helped me out a lot. <laughs> and now what I'm going to do is, well, what I've been doing is producing stuff and kind of uh, wearing it, gifting it to friends and seeing if, how it works, if it breaks, if it's like okay to sell or not, because I don't want to sell something mm -hmm. that like maybe next <laughs> tomorrow it breaks, you know. But yeah, I'll just show you what, like, what it is. I, and I named it Croa because it's the sound that frogs make in Spanish and I thought <laughs> it was cute. <laughs> Oops, I don't know how to pass it by page. Oh, so yeah, so it's just funky, colorful, happy jewelry. I thought it was nice to do like kind of kiddish jewelry for these sad mm -hmm. pandemic times. <laughs> and this is my friend who is super gorgeous. And uh, she helped me like choose the outfit and whatever. And we kind of threw everything together in one day. She... Uh, helped me out a lot and we were able to take some good pictures and let's see if now I can put it up in all the no website and maybe make some money so <laughs> but yeah what it's made of is uh, called polymeric clay and it's kind of like this uh, play-doh mm -hmm. um, I don't know I, I think that the first time I see it in my life was in, in school we had to make like shapes in, in class and then the teacher took it and she took it to the oven and then it becomes hard. And I did, I had, hadn't seen it since like primary school. And then, yeah, my, my sister got some and I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. It, it's like, has like super bright colors. It's really fun to play with. And then you just kind of like put it in the oven and something comes out, you know, it's really fun. Oh, and you just, yeah, yeah, it's totally like for kids. <laughs> um, and then I kind of made, a, I made a, a, a bunch of stuff because I got really excited when my friend was like, yeah, let's take some, some pictures. So I, for three days, I was like, all I did was <laughs> make stuff. And then Vic was like, oh, we're meeting up for do, uh, doing this talk. So I was like, okay, make a lot of things. So you have something to show. <laughs> And I made, I don't know if you can see, but in the little box, there's like uh, one type and then in the other side, there's another type. It and looks like candy. Yeah, right? It's like yeah, you it want to bite into it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, 
So I made this and this side is like kind of mixing colors and experimenting and seeing what can come out. And then in the other side, it was more like super bright and like more kind of statement mm -hmm. uh, pieces with just one color. And so I made like hair clips and they, uh, I had like a lot of things like this in my house. I don't know why, like I have no idea who bought them or <laughs> what they were using them for, but they were in a uh, drawer. So I was like, okay, free stuff. <laughs> I'm going to make this. Um, and made a lot of like colorful hair clips. And I made like a bunch of uh, little rings that I was thinking maybe I can sell like a bunch of them together and you can wear a lot of them. And it's kind of like a fun thing. And then earrings, of course, because, well, Vic knows me. I always wear huge rings, uh, <laughs> earrings every day. <laughs> so, I, of course, I started doing those. And I did, like, some loops, some, like, longer ones, some, you know. And then this is my sister because my friend had to leave. <laughs> so I used her <laughs> for pictures. <laughs> But I think that she looks really cute. It's not because she sure. looks like me. It's just... <laughs> um, but yeah, and then um, uh, she actually helped me make some of these. And it was like, okay, let's do something that is like super huge and like kind of looks like you're a little kid, really. <laughs> like, just makes you happy to wear. And these actually I've had for a really long time. It's like... I think mm -hmm. were the first things that I made and it was uh, just normal earrings. And that's when a lot of people were like, oh, those are really cool. So I was like, okay, but it. <laughs> and yeah. Oh, and this is what I'm wearing right now. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Are you wearing your rings also? Yes, no. I am too. Because I've I, been trying to wear yeah, a lot. I was so looking at them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See potential clientele, huh? Potential client money. <laughs> you basically just need a website and a way to get yeah. these two people yeah. and they, I think you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, but the yeah. thing is like I I don't like to wear jewelry and Paula came to visit me in Portugal in November, was it? And yeah, in Aveiro, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And she was like, Oh, this, you know, look at this, look at that. And I don't know, it's just I guess the color and the you know it's so bright and colorful and fun and I'm like since then I always have so many ideas like in how to kind of incorporate some sort of element of jewelry into my work as well and you have these um earrings or something that were magnets uh, I remember really like oh, the shit, idea. Yeah. Oof, I made those a really long time ago that was like what we were talking about earlier with like being in college and experimenting a lot of things um i had this class uh that was called like literally like product experimentation or something like that mm -hmm. so what you had to do is like pick some material or some technique that you liked and kind of develop a, pro a product and it was funny because it was the first class the only class i ever failed in in, pro in that, that university well yeah I failed and I had to go in July to like kind mm -hmm. of redo the project so in July I was like oh my god I've never failed a class like this is terrible what do I do and and then one day I woke up and I was like oh I'm gonna make some magnetic jewelry like I, I was in a uh, chino store like in the you know, the very cheap bazaar type of store. Yeah. And they, they had a bunch of magnets and I was like, okay, this could be cool. And I made like a whole collection of uh, magnetic jewelry that you can put all sorts of things on top. <laughs> and I sold it with like a little bottle of uh, magnetic paint as well. So you can put it on your things and kind of stick it in there. And then I, I passed the class. <laughs> No it was nice. <laughs> I saw you had a project um, where you use personal items of people or something. Yeah, that project was actually the one that I was first talking about that oh, they okay. failed me. <laughs> oh, really? I, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought the idea was super cool. It was kind of like yeah. making a purse, um, but with the things 
outside or like kind of making a purse with things that you don't need anymore. So okay. I really enjoyed seeing your, your work and uh, you, you, the brightness of it made me uh, think of um, jewelry that I've seen made with the uh, texture, like uh, textiles. I don't know if you've seen them. Mm. I really enjoy like if I were to wear jewelry, I would wear jewelry, which it would only be textile <laughs> because I don't like the <laughs> gold and stuff like uh, that people usually wear. I actually don't yeah. like when I have a twin brother and he used to tease me when we were kids, he used to wear all my uh, mother's rings and he would just come near me and I would be like, no, no, please don't uh, come <laughs> near me because I don't, I don't really like the gold feeling or the, the those metal things on on on, mm -hmm. on skin i don't know why but it just yeah don't. it's funny yeah. yeah but the brightness of of, of the colors really looks cool like uh, it's it's really i don't know i i used to have a a, a friend back in uh, high school and she would always wear bright colors like to school every day And you can clearly tell her apart from other people because <laughs> people, people will be wearing normal like brown jacket, blue jeans, stuff like that. And she would all be like colorful from uh, <laughs> top to toe. And, and yeah, I, seeing your jewelry made me uh, think of her. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, I, I, think um, uh, I started doing it so colorful because it was like, okay, pandemia and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, mm -hmm. everything seems so bleak now. And now I really like, it. like, even if I'm wearing something black because I don't feel like dressing up anything, it's like, okay, a little color makes you a little bit happier, I think, for sure. Definitely. <laughs> All right, so I, I can do a little bit of a jam and I can show you basically what it, what it does. The only thing is that I, you guys won't be able to uh, hear me speak because I don't have a mic going into my mixer. So it will be just me playing the thing. So if you guys are cool with that, I can just jam something out. No, nah, never mind yeah. then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, I love hearing so, you speak. <laughs> so then I'll, I'll just try it. Maybe do this. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? All right, let me just maybe make this a little bit more fun, put some drawings on the bottom. Pay attention. 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 I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, me neither. No. Yeah, okay, well, maybe you were finishing up, I don't know. But in the last, like, okay, 10 yeah, seconds, yeah. it, it kind of cut off. <laughs> it's the bass. You can't really uh, tell the, the bass. I was hearing it on my headphones, but, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> but it, it kind of got... Uh, yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, basically, it's just playing with the buttons. And I already know... So one, one cool thing about this is that you, you can add variations to the loop that you make, but basically it's just a loop. And then you can have a lot of other, uh, or one of these can be a pattern that you can chain. So you can just make a variation, copy into another pattern, and then chain them together to make like a song. So right now I mostly use it like as a tiny loops and then just jam on top of it. But yeah, 
<laughs> That's cool. I don't know why it reminded me of this project um, that I don't know what's the name. If I remember the name, I can link it to the Google Drive. Mm -hmm. It's do. like this, yeah, it's this thing that you kind of connect it and, and you make music with anything that you touch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Have you seen, yeah, you have I've it? Had it? Yeah. Oh my God, that is so cool. I, I love got to try it like it. ages ago and I had it in Lithuania. I never had it with me. And now I came back uh, here. I found it in my drawer. I was like, oh my God, I have some weird items there, like a 3D pen as well. Like that smells <laughs> oh. plastic. I was like, oh, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I have the, oh. the one as well because I remember in university we did some experiments. If you guys want to know how that works, so basically it's the same as pushing a button, but instead it's conducting electricity. So it's basically alligator uh, like uh, cables that like you connect. These. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> so then you connect that to something that can conduct electricity and then you touch it, it will activate uh, whatever recording you have connected to it. But yeah, the, the tiny uh, little instruments that I've shown you before with the bunch of cables. So those are the same thing. It's basically, you make music with, uh, with electricity. So these are what you call CV uh, uh, instruments, uh -huh. control, control voltage uh, activated instruments. And uh, these, uh, these are desktop synthesizers made by a company called Make Noise. <laughs> nice. I just, love, I just love, <laughs> love the name of this company, and I'm also a big fanboy of these these guys. I'll link you guys my uh, my uncle. I used to live with him in Barcelona, and he makes music with uh, like the second stuff that you showed. The synthesizers, synthesizers modular yeah. synthesizers. Yeah, and awesome sentence. Yeah, and he <laughs> one day he just woke up and decided that he wanted to start making music. I, I guess like you like he was like oh I think yeah. this is cool you know he had always played the guitar and he was like okay I want to do this so what he did is we went together to the second half market um, and we looked for like an old uh, suitcase and yeah so yeah yeah he, yeah, he emptied out the suitcase and put all of the synthesizers in there. And now when he gets a gig, he just goes and puts up the suitcase and it's like, Bloop. and his name is like, uh, translates to... Uh, like this. <laughs> yeah, and he puts it like, Bloop. so he opens up and he's with his hat and his name is uh, Dr. Ferreiro and his like magic suitcase or whatever. <laughs> Although one thing that I should also mention is that I buy most of the stuff here in the Netherlands secondhand because it's like a little bit cheaper. So I built this by myself, which I like, I, I bought all the modules independently. I screw them in. So it's kind of a DUI thing that you also have to get into it. And the next step would be to just uh, basically find a, or get a, a soldering machine and then just Soldier the secrets circuits yeah. myself, which is something I, I envision myself doing in probably mm. a year or two in the future. <laughs> oh, I should actually share yeah. something that I've recorded in my SoundCloud if you guys are keen to listen. Yeah. So I can I also put it there. Yeah, but, put everything you can. <laughs> yeah. So basically I've been throughout the the yeah, the months I've been just recording sometimes and then whenever I I think I have something that's musically pleasant, at least to me. I I put it in, on SoundCloud, so I have like a few music that I find. I consider it music already, but I'm not. I'm no musician yet. Maybe in a few years, <laughs> I can unplug and then maybe show you the, show you guys the drawings really quick. This this area here is what we call the uh, doodle wall. <laughs> it has some doodles that I've been making. Like these these are doodles that I. <laughs> I usually make with people. Uh, with, this was made in my room. Like one time, we a friend of mine came to visit me, and he also drew us. So we draw, we drew together, and this this is here because I really enjoyed it. This is actually the last uh, the, that last video that you guys see on Instagram. This is the final result. It's the back of the because I, I at some point I ended up not being able to record everything. So this is like the final thing. It has, it has a lot of stuff in here. 
like that people just went drawing uh, <laughs> along. And then this piece of uh, is another game we did like a few months ago, and it actually has like this is a frog, and then oh, I love the frog. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have like nail, we have a pencil, we have the ball, like really, really normal stuff. We also have Ricardo's dump. <laughs> I'm gonna lie, it, it looks like if you guys took mushrooms or something and then started yeah, drawing like but, everything that. No, so we, we had wine. It's kind of, it's close enough. These were also like made throughout the first year that I came to the Netherlands and then sometimes I would just go out and then draw, copy other, other people's drawings from friends, drew, drew this one. And then this was also something that was uh, here for people to come to, when they came to our place, they could just draw stuff. It's like mandatory for people to, uh, if, you, if you come here and then hang out with us, you, eventually you're gonna draw. <laughs> Something. You're under my roof. You draw now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Did you have any uh, sort of discoveries in 2020 in terms of like platforms that you started to use, or maybe I don't know, you started watching a new show or something that inspires you creatively? Because I, for example, oh. uh, started you know Creative Morning. Um, the, mm -hmm. the yeah. It, worldwide event i will share that as well they do a lot of online workshops at the moment so that's really cool yeah. and yeah i've been joining in on some like experimental drawing uh exercises and stuff that's been helping me a lot and um daisy uh i've been indulging a lot in that actually lately i've been doing that so much that i started drawing less <laughs> my, like i'm doing my own thing less but yeah it's really cool i will share that in uh, g drive yeah Nice. I um the, uh, the one thing I can think of similar. You guys probably know it already, uh, but I've been doing some Coursera courses and some Domestica courses, which are like mm -hmm. some of them How are is free. Domestica is awesome. I actually prefer it from Coursera because it's very like uh, detailed. Um, you do have but to it's pay only for in Spanish, right? It has, um, I do a course and it's with titles in English. <laughs> because they yeah, have exactly. because my job just pay for it, but I never use it because it's oh really? Spanish and I can't, oh I can't well, then take, no, take subtitles. Yeah, but how can you learn something when you just have to read all the time? That's a bit annoying, but I think it's like you know you just take more yeah. time to uh, get take the information in. Yeah, since it's free for you with your job, mm -hmm. then maybe you can try with a like yeah. a shorter course and see if it works. I understand, like if maybe with the subtitles, it's yeah, like no, it's, I can actually tell you guys that in Portugal, the we have a, a the culture that we subtitle everything, like all the movies. So mm -hmm. we are basically used to watching stuff and reading at the same time. Yeah, it's yeah. like normal. In Spain is the opposite. It's yeah, horrible. Yeah, we, we they they <laughs> dub, dub, dub all of everything. the movies, all of the TV shows, everything. Yeah. So actually, I was very old the first time that I watched something that was subtitled, and I was like, "This is this sucks." <laughs> like, yeah. How are you supposed to do both things at the same time? Like, <laughs> I, I had this discussion with so many people, but it's really funny to me because a lot of countries dub, but they have uh, like many actors to dub their stuff. And in Lithuania, we have like three guys or something yes. <laughs> who dub the same shit over and over again. And now I came back to Lithuania and there's like a new guy who dubs films and I cannot watch them anymore because I'm like, I cannot. Who are you? <laughs> it feels so weird when you're like, oh, wait, this is the voice of Harry Potter. Like, why is yeah. he doing yeah. like... <laughs> Oh, and our, we, our films are dubbed on top of the original soundtrack so you can hear both. Oh, like yeah. kind of like documentaries, no? I, I don't, I guess. <laughs> wait, wait, out of phase? Like you would hear the actual person speaking and then you hear the dub on top? Yeah. Oh, no, no, that no. Sounds horrible. <laughs> no, I, I, I could never do that. So for Portuguese, we actually even have the duality of the Brazilian Portuguese that we also mm. uh, can understand. So sometimes you would see... Uh, Brazilian dubbings and it's even funnier because it yeah. sounds, sounds like porn every time, like every time. 
because it i don't know why we associate some something and then even uh, spanish as well like uh, it's it's off to see uh, stuff dubbed in in other languages that to us are, have like i was i thought it would be funny to ask you all um to share what was the worst job you ever had in your life the like worst what the worst job oh because i i have done a lot of jobs in university and stuff like that and i will i can tell you a quick story i i was looking for a job in like communications and stuff and there was one ad uh, uh i think it was like communications assistant or something i don't know for a magazine for a travel magazine and i was like oh that's so cool so i applied for the position and this the uh, guy, the the owner, whatever, he's like, okay, so come in for an interview, but our offices are closed now, <laughs> so uh, come to, to my apartment, like, and I'm like, are you kidding me, like, I'm not going to your apartment, and he's like, I don't know, it's like a bunch of us uh, working from, uh, it's like an office, and we can meet in the hallway, and that's fine, so we meet in the hallway, I went there, he's like, let's go to the office, and we go to the office, and there's no one there. <laughs> No, no, and no, he's no, like, no. And he's like, that's how you get killed. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! I'm like, I'm so. No, no, no. no. Do like a little task, and uh, as you showed. A little task, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Magazine, <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, oh, can you just do the task on the computer? And he like, he's like, oh, this is the, our official email. So I opened one email, and he's reading this email, and he's like, oh, can you fix? the mistakes in this email which was sent to him and i'm like what do, what <laughs> like how what do you mean he's like who sends emails like that it's crazy and he started like making no sense and then and then he stood back and he's like he said like he, t- he was talking to himself a lot and i think he's he was not hearing well so he thought what he was whispering to himself he was like he was uh, just like talking out loud. <laughs> and he steps oh back God. and he's like, what a dumb bitch. <laughs> Can you do this task or not? And then I was like, are you kidding me? And he's like, what, honey? What did you say? I'm like, oh my oh. God. <laughs> and then I left and he called me next day. He's like, so are you interested in the job? <laughs> oh yeah, my God, I'm super was, interested. It was... <laughs> So that funny. sounds surreal. That sounds yeah, very surreal. Hilarious. Like, yeah, I cannot believe that happened. <laughs> and I was like, why did I even go? <laughs> but, okay, so it wasn't like the job, worst job, but like the experience of getting it, I think. But it just <laughs> always makes me laugh when I think about it. It probably no. would have been the worst job ever if you had taken it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I have a story like that. So... So back in 2015, I got a job, and this is absolutely on paper. It's absolutely amazing job. So I was doing a graphic design for a company that was basically one guy, and he was a DJ. So he was he had a, this techno agency, and he would just like make uh, like call all of these uh, hot shots like from techno, like Paul Kochbreiner, and then uh, if you if you know techno, like all of these big names, they would be there. And then I was in charge of creating the image for one festival that he made in a castle. So for nine months, I worked for this dude, and he was completely bonkers, like completely bonkers. Like I can't. Like, so <clears throat> he had to sell tickets, right, for the for the event, and I was in front of the computer making the designs for a poster or whatever, and he would come behind me grab my shoulders and say do the thing you know blah, blah, and all, all like mm-hmm. crazy stuff this is one one of the things that he would do and it was it was it was it was off like i enjoyed being around uh, this thing because it was like really free i could get access to watch and people t- play live techno music it was fucking insane like everything else apart from dealing with the guy and then doing like arriving to work and mind you that every single uh, uh, lunch, I would go out to eat with him and he would drink a, like a big pint or a big amount mm-hmm. of wine. And if I, if I drink with him, I would just go to work after lunch, like super drunk. And he would just <laughs> go home and sleep for the rest of the afternoon. And this guy was like, 
50 years old so he would do this like every day it was crazy it was like yeah, for, for sure for a couple of months must have been really fun though <laughs> it was fun in the beginning at the end i was just like counting the days until i could leave because i i was just not and then funny story at the end of the this was one of those uh jobs that you get in Portugal that the government pays a little bit of the salary so the actual company has a little bit of more room but people just hire the minimum uh, people that they can hire to do the jobs overwork them and then send in the next uh, guy so a little bit above the internship because some internships don't even pay yeah. people but this was like a regular job I had like a 700 euro salary or something like that. He, he would pay just a tiny bit of that, like 25% or something, and the rest would come from the government. The last few months I would get paid, so the first few months I would get paid uh, through bank transfers, and he would make me sign a paper every month so that he would have proof that I received the money, stuff like this. And then at the end, he would just arrive with a, a little bit of like the money in a, in a, in a um, envelope, And I would find this strange. And he was like like this in debt <laughs> because of all oh the stuff. God. Like it was crazy. And the end at the end, like I left and I still had to uh, deliver work for him for, I, I, after a month I had left. And oh the last month he didn't he didn't pay. So I had to like call him and say, Look, you haven't paid the last like month that I was there. And I basically uh, called and sent emails until the point that I just sent a message to him saying, either you pay me, I'm going to rattle on you and it's just say this to someone. And eventually, like, he paid me and then he was uh, making me uh, the bad person and the villain. So I was the worst person because I did that. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that, that You wouldn't fun. work for free. <laughs> yeah. Like, this guy. Can you believe this guy making me pay him what I owe him? Yeah, so stuff like oh, that. The worst. So, uh, <laughs> the worst kind of people, right? So, yeah. And, then, oh, and, and he actually asked me if I wanted to stay <laughs> working for of him. Of course. Oh so, my God. and apart, if, if it wasn't for that and other stuff, like, I, I could have stayed there if it was like, and then it was no, there, there was no organization. Like, he would just arrive and this was a, the, the per person that would work with him. Not, not just him, but they would, I would arrive home and then there's nothing planned. And suddenly he's like, oh yeah, we have this to do for yesterday. Like you have to deliver this for yesterday. Like there's this poster that you have to do for yesterday. Oh, there's this communication that we just need for yesterday. And I, I was just like looking at them. Dude, no one Oops. works for yesterday. Like, do you go to a doctor or a, or, or a, a bread maker or a TV or I, I don't know. No one works for yesterday. You don't go to a place like to a professional person and ask for work that has to be done for yesterday. You can't do that. That's, that's how you went for a few months. Now that you mentioned worst job experience, it's that <laughs> and, and working at a factory. If you ever worked at a factory, I don't know if you guys ever worked at a factory. Don't. <laughs> don't. Because it's just, uh, it, it numbs you up. And the repetitive work of a, a factory and a, a product line, like uh, doing the same thing for eight hours. I've done that. It's, it kills all the living creativity or whatever. So that's my uh, worst job. Uh, <laughs> Do we have story. more worst jobs or is just that? Um, I think mine was <laughs> like a paid job. But it was this uh, ex uh, this expo that I did with um, a couple of friends and, and some people that I didn't know. So they were from my university. Mm -hmm. um, we, we weren't paid, but it was like, okay, you get to do this exposition in this really cool place and like we pay for your food and whatever while you're doing it. And we were working with this really cool like uh, artists, uh, like famous guys from like a street art in in barcelona which is not at all like what i do it's not my style but it was really cool to like learn how what like what their process was and stuff and so these guys were awesome you know they were teaching us about all of the the type of graffiti they do or like uh, putting off posters and um the interventions in buildings that they do which was really nice and then these other people that we didn't know that were not the teachers were the people that were working alongside us, um, they were like, okay, well, that's all good, but um, we already have an idea of what we want to do. 
And me and my friends were like, oh, okay, what, what's the idea? And they were like, oh, we're going to cover the whole place in trash. And we're like, mm, okay, well, what's that have to do with anything? Like, <laughs> I don't really understand it. And then it was like 15 versus three. So we were like, all right, I guess. So we will put like a wall of um, gra graffiti or posters and kind of like this trash that they wanted to do. I was like, oh, I don't really care. Like, that sounds like a terrible idea, but if you want to do it, you do it. The worst thing is we went to go find the materials. So like dumpster diving and like in the street, like grabbing trash. And they were all just like, go pick this up. Oh, you oh pick God. this up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, take all of that. Yeah, that will look good. And I was like, <laughs> like with gloves like touching the trash like oh, fuck you fuck you i don't want to do this project and now you're making me pick up the trash come on <laughs> sounds like wow. contempor contemporary arts yeah, oh yeah exactly no it is <laughs> not my thing <laughs> i'm all ag up against like volunteering work i've done some volunteering work for like tedx's and other events <laughs> And it's 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 crap. Like if you, if you need people to do some uh, some jobs, like just pay them. It's yeah. because then you don't have to complain about them not showing up or yeah. whatever stuff that people actually end up doing because you're not paying them, and you cannot help have hold anyone accountable if you're not actually paying them. Sometimes it makes sense because it's like you give opportunity to people to experience some 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 things, but still you have to provide a minimum. Yeah. Yeah, but do you have any experiences? No, I never had bad jobs. I had oh my God, you're so jobs. lucky. Yeah, I had hard jobs, but bad ones, I don't think so. I mean, yeah, what is, um, as a waitress, that was really hard. But mm. that's it. I mean, job is not supposed to be easy sometimes when you're yeah. like 20, 21. It's, it's mm. okay. Mm. but i mean it's a bit like i'm struggling now to find gigs and freelance jobs so i think that's now it's the rough patch but freelancing, I never is, freelancing is hard yes <coughs> it is yeah, you have to do that constantly yeah there's so much business so, into it as well no yeah, exactly you, it's like 80 percent of expect. just selling yourself it's just like exactly yeah, that's why I don't do it. That, that's exactly my point. Like, I don't want to be... Yeah, I can understand <clears throat> that completely. Yeah. I, could I don't do... like really talking about myself that much. Like, I just don't like it. But the thing is, like, I have to just blah, mm. blah, blah my way into it. And I'm just like, yeah. come on, just... You see my work. Yeah. Just hire me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's so okay. true. And it's also not... the, the financial part as well. Like, you yeah. have to collect... <laughs> Something that I really struggle with, the social media part is like yep. so boring to me. And like, there's no way around it, you know, because obviously like now that's the way you do it. But yeah. um, I'm the same. I, I have Instagram and I don't think I have posted anything in forever because I was just like, this is not for me. And now that I'm even going to put up the website with this or whatever, I'm thinking I, I have to put mm -hmm. an Instagram or or a TikTok because it's 2021, guys. <laughs> I think the golden rule, at least to me, is as as long as I'm pleasing myself, or as uh, this sounds yeah. right and wrong, but as long as I'm pleased with what I, what I do and it pleases me to see it, I'm good. I don't live to satisfy anyone else. I draw for for me. If I wanted to be a professional illustrator, maybe I. The, I shouldn't approach it that way. I would need to yeah, exactly. have, a look, have a look at trends, have a look at what people, other people are doing, and maybe be a little bit more aware of uh, of yeah the, the type of work that people are uh, after and cater to that. Well, if you guys find any uh, enlightenment or ideas, advice, or anything. Put it on the G drive. <laughs> and, definitely, so, definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, it uh, would be really cool to share. I really love the idea that Paul has suggested. We all share uh, things that we like, and not necessarily professionally, but yeah, mm -hmm. things that you listen to at the moment. Um, Maybe we should. Uh, are we doing more of these videos? What do you mean? Are we doing 
next time no never again never you are never invited. Like, no yeah of course never <laughs> again you're banned <laughs> from here i i want to uh, also ask people that we talked with last time to do the same uh, and just like have this file kind of like ongoing um, <laughs> so yeah it was really nice to talk to you all uh, it was really nice to well, watching um, yes yeah. Thank you guys yes, for yes, really keep in touch. It was really fun. Thank you guys for um, yes. hearing my rants. <laughs> Sometimes <they're laughs> Thanks for just there. rants. <laughs> ah, it was super interesting. Yeah. It was nice uh, getting to know you guys and your work. Yeah, yeah keep on keep on doing stuff and uh, yeah. Keep on Looking sharing. To see. Yeah, keep on sharing. <laughs> I'm, I'm a terrible sharer to be honest. I don't share well, that much. Dinner. Okay, bye bye. Right. I, I need to go to sleep. Bye guys. Bye. 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 B